sitting in the tasting room at Stone Barn Brandy Works here in Portland. This is one of the wonderful things you can do when you're visiting Portland is come to something called Distillery Row. You have a lot of different varieties of spirits I'm seeing. <laughs> and you have, you have uh, whiskeys, you have liqueur, you have, so it's not just all brandy. We do um, whiskeys, which are grain based. We do um, the brandies, which are all fruit based. The apricot is, we try to keep things on the tart side in general. Ooh, that's yummy. Yeah. Well, on Distillery Row, you guys have these passports. Um, yes. How do you get one? So they're available at every distillery and they enable you to have a waived tasting fee. And then there are some vendor, local vendor discounts, everything from restaurants to clothing stores. Nice. Well, thank you so much. I thank wanted to you ask you, much. I know Sebastian's over there working hard yeah. on the distillery, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> distilling equipment. Yeah. Um, and uh, so is he, what is he doing right now? What so, is he uh, He is making a batch of um, apple brandy right now. We wash the apples, crush them, and then bucket it into here. So it takes about 500 pounds, and it takes about a month to ferment the apples. So this much apples will make these many bottles of apple brandy. Just this here, 20 bottles. 500 pounds makes 20 bottles. The mash we'll put in here. We run the mash. And we're going to heat it, and the alcohol vapor is going to rise up out of there and go through an obstacle course here, and then ultimately come back down on that side. And so the entire run takes about five hours. About 150 liters. That's 40 gallons, and we'll get out. In terms of usable alcohol, well, you see it right there. We're just about at the end of the run. It's not too much, but it's 160 proof. Well, it's been really fun yeah. stopping by here at our Thank first you. stop at our distillery tour. We're going to continue following our passport and hit the other four distilleries. And I just want to thank you for being part of our Oregon Lifestyle Show and our distillery tour. Okay, so I'm standing here with Dave, who's um, a pedicab driver. Is that what you call this, pedicab? Yep, PDX pedicab. Yeah, we run uh, distillery road tours. Uh, we have about four different distilleries that we can go to depending on day and time. Uh, we're at House Distillery right now, uh, which is lovely by the way. And we typically run New Deal, uh, Vin, East Side, and House Distilling. Nice. That's a great way to do it. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Don't have to walk, don't have to worry, I take care of it. Cool Dave, well happy pedaling. Oh, thank you. Happy distilling you guys. Hey. Have fun. Thank you. All right, so I am here with Rochelle Thorpe here at House Spirits on Distillery Row. Um, I have my passport. So at every distillery, they sell these. They're what, $20? They're $20, um, and they're good for uh, the five distilleries on Distillery Row. Nice, and so it waives the distillery fee, so you don't have to pay that, which is typically like $5 or something yes, like that. Yes, they're all $5, so, yep. so you save a little bit of money. Right, yeah. And are, is there anything else that is beneficial in here? Or yeah, you money? get some, there's a, Coupons to a few uh, like really fun bars and restaurants in town, um, and as well as it has tasting notes for like a little place for you to write tasting notes about the spirits that you like. It's very nice. So if you want to pass for it, stamp me. I do indeed. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, welcome. We currently have nine spirits that we're offering for our tasting. Well, we'll have you start off with the Aviation Gin. Um, it's a New Western Dry Gin. So really that means that um, it's just a lot less juniper forward than most gins. Um, it's got a lot of lavender, which makes it very floral, some cardamom and coriander for a little bit of spice in the middle, and then it finishes with Indian sarsaparilla, sweet orange peel, and, and aniseed. Mmm, I can see where that's going around the world. Mm -hmm. That's very lovely. For our run, we use all Barbados molasses. We double pot distill it and then age it for six months in our used whiskey barrels. Um, a pretty dry rum, um, sort of a Jamaican style, um, but it also has a very rum-like quality to it where you get a lot of that um, almost like butterscotch on the nose. That's yeah. really good. Can I finish off with the coffee liqueur? Because Absolutely. I have to try the coffee liqueur. Yes. And I mean, it's so perfect for Portland. We, we love our booze and our coffee. Um, <laughs> it's a good combination. Yeah. Um, so the coffee, it's a rum base. We use our unaged rum 
And then we mix it with Stumptown's cold pressed, cold extracted coffee. Stumptown um, is one of our beloved uh, coffee roasters right, right now. And local. I know mm -hmm. everything's all about local. Yes. I love local products. I love that you guys all came together as distilleries and decided to be a group yeah. to, to entice people to come down because this is a really great thing to do. It's very fun. Yeah. Or yeah. pedicab, because we just found out with Dave you can pedicab around. Yep, all kinds of ways to drink. Oh, that is excellent. Thank Isn't you so that? much, oh, no problem. for having us here at House Spirits and for being on Oregon Lifestyles. We will just continue enjoying ourselves on the Wonderful. Distillery Road Tour. Yeah, come on back. All right, so I am here at Vin Distillery, and I'm here with Michelle Lee, one of the owners. It's actually our dad's dream, and he's the one who's kind of started the whole thing. It's really neat. years later, yeah. Really neat. And Distillery Road, we're having so much fun with oh, all good. our friends and going around and tasting, and we really love the passport and yeah. getting the deal that we're getting. And so, uh, you know, we've been to China, and we've been to some of the long houses up in southwest China, and it's very, very interesting that you have this recipe that comes from China, so this really sets you apart. The Baijiu, it's considered the national drink of China, has been, this specific recipe has been in our family for over seven generations. When we came to America, we didn't know where to get this alcohol, because we use this to honor our ancestors, we use it for cooking, we use it, we use it for celebration. Yeah, I've had it in, in China, in a longhouse, in a little community up in the yeah. rice terrace fields, which we could not communicate whatsoever, but that was that's what they had and that's what they offered us. What I can start you off with is what we call our mijo ice. Mijo basically means rice wine. Our mijo ice is made with 100% brown rice and it's all natural, so the color you see, the flavor you taste, is all coming from the rice. Mmm. Oh, that is very yeah, nice. Yeah, so as it hits your palate, it, uh, it's a little tart, but then it finishes mm. sweet, and then you get this really nice lingering flavor of Asian pear. But I have no problem finishing that. Oh, good. <laughs> but then we'll move to our um, Vin Mijo Fire, which is the same process of the way we make ice, but just using a different grain. We use uh, black rice instead of brown rice. And again, the color comes from the rice. And as it hits your palate, you're going to get a little more smokiness, and then you'll have a playful, nutty, berry flavoring. Mmm. I really like your spirits. Thank you. They're very different. They are. And when we first got started, it was very difficult for us to describe how it is, because mm -hmm. it is very unique. I like them all. Now, this is the one that I had this in is, China. Yes. Now, this is going to be a little different, because Baijiu is made just kind of like vodka, where it can be made from anything. And our baijiu is made with 100% brown rice, but depending on the region that you're in and what's accessible to that region. So like Northern China typically are made from sorghum, which tends to be a little more floral, whereas this one is rice-based, so it tends to be a little more creamy. Um, and so you just drink it straight like this, typically? It's, traditionally, it's drank neat, room temperature with food. Um, if you go back to China, you'll find that they've changed a different, wow, uh, added a different tra tradition of just uh, gumbe, which means bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That tastes very familiar to me. Oh, well, thank you so much, Michelle. My pleasure. I enjoyed your tastings here at Vin Distillery, and we have two more distilleries to go Great. on Distillery Road. Okay, so we're here at distillery number four at New Deal Distilling, and I'm with Gail Emish. How long have you been making your spirits? We were Portland's first vodka distillery, and we've been distilling since 2004. So we're having a great time on the distillery road tour. Excellent. It is so wonderful to be able to walk between the distilleries and yes. have little tastings. Well, we're going to today start with our Gin 33, and this is what we call our Portland Dry Gin. We wanted to go back to a juniper-forward gin, so it's really big and aromatic. Uh, it's really bright, and it has these beautiful hints of floral and citrus at the finish. Mm. You described that perfectly. Tom, our um, our owner distiller, is a bit of a mad scientist, so <laughs> he's always got something uh, something up his sleeve. Good. Yeah. Well, we like mad scientists. So uh, this is more of a agricole style rum. So we are starting with a uh, sugarcane fermentation. It is double pot distilled, um, and then we uh, finish it for eight weeks on French oak, so it's got this just beautiful little buttery finish. Wow, that is really lovely. So next up is our mud puddle. Oh. Uh, this is our bitter chocolate vodka. Oh. <clears throat> so what we're doing here is taking cocoa nibs, part of the cocoa bean, we toast those and we're infusing them with the vodka. So really? there's no added sugar. This is just the essence of cacao. Wow. So we have two liqueurs, our coffee liqueur and our ginger liqueur. Which I you, love liqueur. Do you want to try them both? Yes, please. All right. <laughs> yeah. Here's our coffee liqueur. And uh, with our coffee liqueurs being here in the neighborhood that we're in, 
Um, we are surrounded by so many amazing roasters and we're doing a local roasters line. So uh, this, we start with a cold pressed brew. We're making a really nice strong coffee. Then we add the alcohol and the sweetness. Um, so pair this with the one that you just had. The mud puddle is a beautiful pairing. Yes, you can make it a, a, its own drink with the two different spirits. Oh, that? absolutely. Oh, that is And then our ginger liqueur is just beautiful, bright, fresh, spicy ginger. Right. So this is just heaven in a bottle as far as I'm concerned. Mm, that is really good. And ginger, it's like healthy. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a digestive. <laughs> It calms your stomach, it makes you happy. Thank you, Gail, at New Deal Distilling to have us here and be on Oregon Lifestyles, and we're very excited about Distillery Row. All right, we're leaving New Deal Distillery now, and uh, we're getting ready to go to the last distillery, which is Eastside Distilling. And are you guys having fun? Yeah! yeah. All right, let's go. Last stop on the Distillery Road Tour. Hey, everybody. Hi. 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 Welcome. Come on in. Yeah, Welcome you. to Eastside Distilling. So the first one here is our Portland Potato Vodka, and it's a lot smoother than a grain vodka. Does anybody want to try the vodka? Okay, great. Me too. Next up is our Below Deck Silver Rum. So when you hear white, light, or silver rum, it's all the same thing. It hasn't been spiced and it hasn't been aged in an oak barrel. So they're all the same thing. Um, all rums come from a sugar base, be it cane sugar, white sugar, brown sugar. We actually use molasses for ours because molasses is a high concentrate of sweetness and it's also very bitter and earthy and rooty. So the combination between the sweetness and the bitter, it smooths this out considerably. It's an extremely smooth rum. It's excellent to try the silver rum because our other infused rums are from the silver rum. Next up is our below deck coffee rum. It's a cold press infusion, which means it's got four times the amount of caffeine in it. So a standard bar shock is an ounce and a half. An ounce and a half of this stuff is the equivalent of one cup of coffee. So next up is our below deck ginger rum. Um, after distilling the silver rum, we're gonna throw fresh ginger straight into the vat and let it sit for about five weeks and then filter it out. Um, it is a very strong ginger flavor because we are using real ginger. Um, you can actually cook with it as well. If you were to glaze your pan before you did stir fry, oh, excellent. Obviously, ginger pairs really well with Asian cuisine, so okay. sip it with some sushi. I know what everybody in the group is saying is how educational this is. Yeah. You know, whether you, you know, the, all the different spirits and how you can use them yeah. in different ways. Yes. Like cooking or, or absolutely, it's Ex extremely educational. So next up, you guys, is our bourbons. This is my favorite part because I am a bourbon drinker. Another misconception out there is that bourbon can only be made in Bourbon County, Kentucky, and that is false. In 1964, there was a resolution that was passed that deemed bourbon the national spirit of the United States. So it's kind of like our mascot spirit. The next one is our double barrel. So after four years in that first barrel, we're gonna pump it out of there and put it into a second barrel, hence double barrel. So if you were to ever smell raw Oregon oak, it smells a lot like vanilla. And there's an ingredient in it called vanillin, which is actually how they, how they get artificial vanilla extract, is they press oak wood. All oak wood has it, but the Oregon oak, it has more of a concentrate in it, so it comes out more in the Oregon oak. Also, Oregon oak is a lot softer and more porous than Midwest oak is. So what it does is it softens this, and it gives it more of a vanilla flavor. You're putting it in a brand new barrel. So you've got first the first charred barrel and the second charred barrel, so you're doubling the smoke on it. So it's soft, it's vanilla with a little bit more smoke to it. Off of the still uh, whiskey, the very first day you put it in that barrel, it's gonna change it dramatically. And from that second day, from the first day, it's gonna change even more dramatically. So after 60 days, this would have been a different product if we let it age for 59 days or 61 days, but they tasted it at 60 and said, this is what I want, let's bottle it. Okay, we're ending our tour at Distillery Road. We've had a fabulous time, and we had a fabulous time. Yeah! Yeah! our passport. I highly recommend you get a passport at any one of the five distilleries on Distillery Row. It'll save you some money. There's some nice information in here. And I just want to thank everybody for coming out for Oregon Lifestyles and doing the distillery tours. You can see we're still standing. <laughs> and we've been to five distilleries, so it's completely possible. And we're going to end our tour now here at Eastside Distillery.